Algo metálico atraviesa el espacio y no proviene de la Tierra. El objeto conocido como Atlas III, al cruzar el sistema solar a más de 130,000 millas por hora, rompió instantáneamente todas las expectativas. No era solo otro viajero atrapado en el hielo, proveniente de una estrella lejana. Era un visitante que liberaba casi 10 libras de níquel puro cada segundo. No una mezcla caótica de escombros cósmicos, no una combinación de hierro y polvo, sino níquel refinado, separado e aislado, de una manera que la naturaleza no suele hacer. Más escalofriante aún es lo que falta, hierro. El hermano cósmico del níquel, forjado junto en los corazones nucleares de estrellas moribundas, estaba prácticamente ausente. La composición era tan refinada y fuera de lugar que los científicos comenzaron a susurrar lo impensable. Esto podría no ser un asteroide ni un cometa. Podría no ser siquiera natural. Y luego llegaron las señales. En lo profundo de los datos, a través de diferentes observatorios y sensores espaciales, comenzaron a aparecer pulsos débiles pero deliberados, patrones que no se alineaban con las ondas de radio cósmicas o naturales, sino con una estructura intencional de radiación de fondo. El mundo de la ciencia pasó del asombro a la confusión y de la confusión al miedo. Porque si Atlas III no es una roca, entonces ¿qué es? Cuando los investigadores detectaron por primera vez a Atlas III desde un telescopio en Chile, el 1 de julio de 2025, ya se movía a una velocidad vertiginosa. A primera vista, parecía un huésped raro pero bienvenido el tercer objeto interestelar detectado en la historia de nuestro sistema solar. Pero la celebración pronto se convirtió en preocupación cuando el análisis espectral del Very Large Telescope comenzó a devolver datos. El coma que rodeaba al objeto, ese halo tenue de gas y partículas, no estaba compuesto típicamente de hielo, vapor de agua o compuestos de carbono. Estaba liberando níquel puro. En términos cósmicos, el níquel no es raro, pero níquel puro sin hierro es como encontrar un lingote de oro en medio de una mina de carbón. Simplemente no ocurre de forma natural en la Tierra. Separar el níquel del hierro requiere manufactura, fundición, separación química y mucha energía. Es tecnología, no casualidad. El hecho de que este objeto lo estuviera haciendo en el espacio y a una escala nunca antes vista, encendió las alarmas. Un astrofísico de Harvard fue contundente. No es una roca. Está diseñado. Y así, la narrativa sobre Atlas III pasó de la curiosidad científica a la posibilidad de un contacto. El misterio se volvió más desconcertante con cada estudio. El telescopio James Webb, con su precisión infrarroja e inigualable, examinó las emisiones de Atlas III y reveló un descubrimiento impactante. Además de liberar níquel metálico, el objeto tenía la proporción de dióxido de carbono a agua más alta jamás observada en un cometa. Ocho partes de CO2 por una de agua. Como referencia, los cometas de nuestro sistema solar suelen tener alrededor de un 4% de CO2. Este era un objeto construido con materiales completamente diferentes. Su composición no solo era extraña, sino incompatible con cualquier método conocido de formación en nuestro sistema solar. Si venía de una estrella distante, debería tener trazas de elementos familiares, patrones y equilibrios. Pero Atlas III desobedecía todas esas reglas. Era único, alienígena y deliberado. Se sentía más como una carga útil que como un cuerpo natural. Una cápsula que transportaba materiales con un propósito. Pero la pregunta resurgía cada día más fuerte. ¿Cuál era ese propósito? Si su composición sorprendía, su trayectoria provocaba escalofríos. Los objetos interestelares no suelen alinearse con nuestros planetas. Llegan en curvas impredecibles, pasando rápidamente por el sistema, sin tocar ni perturbar. Pero Atlas III parecía actuar en sentido contrario. Se acercó a Venus, Marte y Júpiter en una secuencia de sobrevuelos con tal precisión estadística que los científicos calcularon una probabilidad de solo 0,005%. Para empeorar las cosas, su órbita no solo era inusual, sino retrógrada. En lugar de moverse con el flujo de las órbitas planetarias, viajaba contracorriente, como un coche en sentido contrario por una autopista de un solo sentido, lentamente, como si observara, como si planeara. Y en su apogeo, el punto más cercano al Sol, que ocurrió detrás del Sol y protegido de nuestros mejores instrumentos, 
Parecía que alguien o algo no quería que observáramos durante su fase más activa. Cada una de estas decisiones, los sobrevuelos, la trayectoria, el movimiento retrógrado, sería inexplicable si se tratara de un objeto natural. Sin embargo, si estaba planeado, de repente todo tenía sentido. A medida que Atlas III avanzaba más profundamente en el sistema, comenzaron a aparecer señales. No mensajes de audio ni luces visibles, sino firmas metálicas incrustadas en las proporciones de sus emisiones. Algunos investigadores creen que esto podría ser una forma de comunicación, no en palabras o sonidos, sino en composición. La idea es tan antigua como SETI. Una civilización inteligente podría incluir un mensaje no en sonidos, sino en proporciones matemáticas y químicas que cualquier especie científicamente avanzada reconocería. Una teoría propone que la relación níquel-carbono, la ausencia de hierro y los niveles extremos de CO2 forman parte de una secuencia codificada, un código morse metálico incrustado en la estructura misma del objeto, quizás no un mensaje para ser leído de inmediato, sino una transmisión a largo plazo, una señal real que solo sería notada por una civilización capaz de espectroscopia avanzada, en otras palabras, nosotros. La idea de que esto podría ser una sonda von Neumann, un explorador robótico autorreplicante, resurgió con renovada vitalidad. Porque si la señal está destinada a ser interpretada, entonces el objeto no es un viajero, es una prueba. Structure to the microbursts found in 3i Atlas, except this FRB came from a galaxy 400 million light years away. The implication? Either this is a universal communication protocol or both events are linked. And if they are linked, then 3i Atlas isn't just a rogue traveler. It's part of something much bigger, a network, a system, or even a fleet. That realization sparked fears among global defense communities. If these objects are communicating across galaxies using chemical signatures, gravity pulses, and thermal rhythms, then we're not just witnessing an anomaly. We're witnessing an operation. As panic built in private corridors of power, one last event pushed things into total disbelief. During an attempt to recalibrate the web's optical instruments on 3i Atlas, astronomers noted a strange lensing effect around the object, not from its mass, but from a field of interference. It distorted the background stars in a way similar to gravitational lensing, yet the object didn't have the mass to cause it. That led to one inescapable hypothesis. 3i Atlas was surrounded by a form of energy manipulation or cloaking, an active field distorting light around it. This wasn't some drifting relic. This was a camouflage structure, a machine designed to move undetected until now. Even worse, the field wasn't constant. It pulsed at intervals that matched the microbursts found earlier, as if the lensing distortion was part of the signal itself, or perhaps a response to being observed. Because when we looked at it, it looked back. Then came the moment no one expected, a coordinated sensor blackout. Over the span of 37 seconds, Ground-based observatories in Hawaii, Chile, South Africa, Australia, and even Antarctica reported simultaneous telemetry errors when tracking 3i Atlas. All instruments went dark for the exact same duration. Even satellites in orbit briefly lost line-of-sight data. It was as if something, or someone, had triggered a global sensor eclipse, temporarily blinding every eye watching the object. But here's the twist. 37 seconds after the blackout ended, a subtle shift in 3i Atlas's trajectory was detected. It had changed course slightly. A deviation of just 0.008 degree, insignificant for natural movement, but terrifying if intentional. Because if it was intentional, then 3i Atlas didn't just know we were watching. It knew how we were watching. And it used that knowledge to disappear, adjust, and move, not randomly but with purpose. Just as the global sensor blackout was being brushed off publicly as a cosmic coincidence, an anonymous whistleblower claiming ties to the European Space Agency leaked an internal communication dated only hours after the incident. The document referenced an unauthorized data spike intercepted by military-grade infrared satellites, which had momentarily picked up what was described as a thermal bloom with geometric symmetry originating from the object. The geometry, described in the report as a hexagonal radiative pattern, was unnatural. 
Symmetry at that level doesn't exist in cosmic outgassing. What does? Technology. The bloom lasted 1.3 seconds, just long enough to be recorded before 3 Eye Atlas resumed its silence. This thermal event, matched with the prior cloaking distortions, sent an undeniable message to those with clearance. Something is active, and it is hiding in plain sight. Simultaneously, something strange began to occur in Earth's own protective magnetic shell. Magnetometers in low Earth orbit registered a subtle fluctuation in the Van Allen belts, Earth's radiation shield, right as 3I Atlas aligned with our planet's orbital plane. The shift was small, but it was synchronized with the exact moment 3I Atlas passed behind the sun and reappeared days later. Scientists described it as a magnetospheric hiccup, a phenomenon only previously observed during massive solar storms. But there were no solar storms, no flares, no explanation. Some suspect this wasn't an external coincidence, but an intentional test, as if 3I Atlas was scanning, pinging, or mapping our planet's magnetic field for vulnerabilities. Others suggested something far worse, that it was mimicking our signature, learning to blend in, to become invisible within our own system. On August 8th, seismic sensors in the Indian Ocean detected a deep, ultra-low frequency vibration that didn't originate from tectonic movement or known maritime activity. The signature didn't behave like a natural quake or underwater volcanic activity. It pulsed rhythmically like a sonar wave, repeating exactly every 12 minutes. What made this terrifying was its directionality. Triangulation revealed it wasn't spreading outward like normal vibrations. It was focused upward, as if targeting satellites or something in orbit. Analysts dubbed it the soundless impact because while it shook the instruments, it produced no sound waves detectable by hydrophones. It was a vibration with intent, a directed wave possibly interacting with space-based systems. No natural explanation fit the profile. But if 3I Atlas had transmitted a wave through Earth's oceans to reach our orbital ring, it would suggest a level of planning that shatters even our wildest theories. Finally, a commercial CubeSat operated by a private aerospace startup in low Earth orbit began malfunctioning in strange ways. Its internal temperature dropped 40 degrees below operating threshold in minutes. Its gyroscope spun erratically, and worst of all, it started broadcasting a signal it was never programmed to emit. The waveform, once analyzed, matched the microburst signature found earlier in 3I Atlas's emissions. The CubeSat was repeating a signal. Not one it recorded, but one it had somehow absorbed and began echoing back. This meant 3I Atlas had not only reached Earth's orbit with its signal, it had seeded a relay. It had infected or altered a satellite to amplify its message. This wasn't a comet. It was a node, a machine, a messenger, or something far beyond both. And now it had used our own technology to complete its circuit. What began as a strange interstellar rock leaking metallic vapor has unraveled into something far beyond science, something that no observatory, no space agency, no military command was truly prepared to face. 3I Atlas is not just a traveler from another star. It is a system, a transmitter, a mirror held up to our ignorance. Every signal, every emission, every distortion has whispered a message we chose not to hear. You were never alone. Its orbit defied physics. Its structure defied chemistry. Its silence was louder than any explosion in space. And when it began to seed its signal into our satellites, into our oceans, into our very magnetosphere, the fear turned from cosmic wonder to existential dread. Because this isn't the start of a conversation. It's the activation of one. The CubeSat that echoed its signal was not a malfunction. It was a handshake, a test, a trigger, and we passed it. So now we are left with a single staggering truth. 3i Atlas didn't come here to visit. It came here because it had been here before, because it knew where to go, because it knew who we were. And now that its message is in orbit, reverberating across the invisible threads of our planet's magnetic shell, we have to ask ourselves something terrifyingly simple. What happens when the reply arrives? If this video made your spine tingle even half as much as the scientists decoding this mystery, like, subscribe, and comment below what you think 3i Atlas really is. Because whatever it is, it's not done with us yet.